really crushing it with this Winota deck. Yeah, Winota just has the propensity to win out of nowhere. If you don't have an answer for Winota on turn four and you have a couple triggers going, you can just win on the spot, you know, hitting Kenrith, hitting Blade yep. Historian, hitting Elite Spellbinder. It's just, it's so, so powerful. And if you take a look at the hand here for Sato, doesn't have Winota in hand, but does have a very nice start to his turn in the Innkeeper into a turn three Essigus Chariot, which has been a powerhouse in and of its own. Yeah, even considered a mulliganing there when overall that's a very good hand outside of, of course, having Winota to really go over the top. But uh, yeah, definitely a functioning hand, especially with that Lotus Cobra to go into a turn three, a Zika's Chariot, which has been just so good, like Luis was saying in the intro. Yeah. One thing I have noticed about this Naya Winota deck is that it doesn't have all that much interaction. So this mm -hmm. game plan here for Gavin Thompson is just, okay, I'm going to get Magda down. I'm going to start swinging and I'm going to make treasures. You know, it, it's it's kind of both players just doing their own thing in the first game. And then post board, there's a little bit more interaction coming in. Totally agree. And that's why this start from Gavin is so good. Magda and Jasper Sentinel, even when you're missing a lot of lands, you know that you're not going to get too much interaction coming back at you. So this this kind of cool combo where you get to generate two mana with these creatures um, each turn is, is very powerful. It is indeed. So a consideration there to get the snacks down on the board, but instead go for the kitty cats as uh, they'll be able to put up a decent amount of blocking power here for these creatures should they swing in. Bone yep. Giant looks to be the go-to for Gavin. Look at that draw from, from Sato, though. That is Winota off the top. So if we get a land, this Azika's Chariot is already so good on its own, but producing two creatures that are non-human to be able to trigger it is huge. So a land is going to be an insane draw step next turn. Just realized, Gavin is in a frog onesie. Absolutely he is, yep. I love it. <laughs> Very on brand as uh, Alpha Frog. I, I hope that should we see a victory here that we'll get the full cosplay. Yeah. I'm sure Alpha, chat requested. <laughs> Alpha Frog on Magic Gathering Online, definitely staying to his brand there as Thompson. I, it, <laughs> it looks awesome. <laughs> the big decision point here for Gavin, what he wants to deploy. Like you mentioned, we'll be able to generate two mana with the Jasper Sentinel tapping Magda. Does have the third land in hand in Den of the Bugbear, but comes in tapped. Yeah, so Thompson's got a lot of options here. You can choose to just deal with both of these cats here with Fire Prophecy and Stomp. And with an extra Emberclave in there, Fire Prophecy looks, you know, that much better to be able to get rid of one of those copies. You don't really need a second blade in this matchup. But it's always fun, right? <laughs> yeah. That's true. It's like, oh, you see the one in Cleave, but do you predict the next? <laughs> and even with both of these cats going away here, you still get a very nice play with these Winota decks. I'm just playing Winota, crewing it with Azika's Chariot and attacking. Even if you're not copying yeah. anything, that's still a trigger. And let's say you put Kenrith with it, and there's the land. <laughs> oh, oh, excellent draw there for KSK Sato. As uh, the play you just mentioned is now online. Let's see if it's worth doing that. Or if you just want to jam a bunch of Cobras and get some setup first. But yeah, I think this looks too wide open. It's Winona mm -hmm. time. It's too appealing. You just, you, you know, if you can get a trigger, if you can get extra value on the board, go for it. Here comes yeah. the Seeker's Chariot. Winona's a joiner of forces. Oh, Blade Historian. Oh, Blade Historian that is a lot of damage. Huge. My Whoa. goodness, down to five. An attack for 12 there on turn four already in the first game of this match. That's it. That's impressive. And already oh. reaching for the concede button. These game ones <laughs> are pretty rough. Uh, but post board, you got a lot of red cap melees coming in for Thompson. Oh, for sure. So just doing the quick math, figuring out if it is worth sticking around or uh, if he wants to preserve at least some, some, you know, face health, as it were. Yeah, there we go. Another chariot's drawn off the top there, so we'll be able to get some cats down, allowing Winota to swing in. If not, why not? Let's make some kitty cats. Another chariot here to presumably keep the old chariot, crew that up with the cats, make some copies, get another Winota trigger, and oh yeah, they all have double strike as well. Yeah, you know, this, no big. 
This is really showcasing the power of these Winota decks. Some of these draws just look unbelievably strong. Some, with the mana base, you know, can add to some problems. But when you get to do this, this deck just looks unbeatable. Yeah. Incredibly good. Gavin not finding another land to help out here a little bit. But Spellbinder is going to add to the woes here for Gavin. Take a look in the hand and dispatch of whatever he feels like. At this point, you got to think it doesn't really matter what he takes here. Yep, conserving some information as well there. Kind of thought we'd see that. KCK winning there very convincingly with Niowa Nota. But as you mentioned, Gavin Thompson can now go to the sideboard answers to this Winota deck. Yeah, absolutely. Four red cap melee really changes the dynamic here of this matchup. Just being able to still progress your battlefield and then having a way to deal with Winota for one mana just really shows how powerful of a sideboard card it is since we've been seeing three or four in a lot of these Gruel sideboards. Yeah, so a lot of interaction now coming in for Case Kesato, bringing in the red cap melees, the burning hands, giant killer, which has been super good. Even a rip apart in there to deal with the artifacts that uh, Gavin Thompson's rocking. <clears throat> and really trying to add a lot more removal as well um, for the Winota deck. Just just trying to kind of play the same game since the game's going to really slow down. You have to be able to control the battlefield a little bit. Let's jump into the action here. Game number two underway. Better looking hands here for Gavin Thompson. As the fourth land has the Edgewall Innkeeper, would love to find some adventure creatures to go with it. And not the best uh, seven up there. Mm -mm. All right. This one looks a little better, though. And that is a, a Mythos of Vadrock. Mm -hmm. That is a card that I have barely seen play in standard so far, but really powerful in this being able to spread out five damage. Yeah. Like any number of creatures. I like magic missile on steroids, just caught yeah, in the face. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, look at that. Bit of a fist, fist bump, bump there. Ezekiel's Chariots will be able to come down on turn three. And this yeah. is looking very good here for Gavin. That was so important for Gavin, as we saw in the camera, just to be able to put pressure, you know, mm -hmm. because you can have all the answers in the world to this Winota deck. But if you don't have pressure to go along with it, you're not really giving yourself um, a, a good chance to win. You need to be able to attack on both axes. For sure, as we'll see the Prosperous Innkeeper down the battlefield making that treasure token. We'll be able to jump in the way of a creature should it come swinging on in. Yeah, but this is... I don't think there's any swinging. We're just going to see some kitty cats. Yep, kitty cats jumping in the Cadillac for this turn. And then we even have the den available next turn. Mm -hmm. Of course, now you do want to kind of protect a little bit um, with that will, but the will's not doing a ton here. Only really hitting Azika's Chariot. Yeah, well, it's not doing super much, but a uh, good draw there for Keisuke as he finds Burning Hands. So that will be able to take care of a creature on Gavin's side. Yeah, interesting here, because um, you have the same kind of dilemma with the Winota deck. You really want to put pressure on and then start using your removals to kind of clear the way. Um, so we'll see if we want to get all our creatures out first or hold up Burning Hands for the Azika's Chariot to make sure it cannot start copying these cats. So what's the play here going to be for Sato? Mythos of Vadrock is going to take care of three of these creatures. Yeah, that is a nice one here. That is shutting down both of the cats, killing Innkeeper, and then without a way to crew this chariot, you can't even activate Den. So mm -hmm. a really nice Mythos there. Okay, that was a big draw. Yeah, excellent draw there. Four-powered creature would be able to get the Cadillac swinging now. How badly does he want this innkeeper off the board? Yeah, and there's the dilemma. Know. The 1-1 one, one that just gains life when creatures comes into play is not the big deal. The big deal is it is not a human, so that if there was land Winota, that's the big problem that you that you want to avoid. And there's not a great answer for that yeah. from Thompson's side, but you do have the 1-2 to at least block it. But let's say if it came with a Kenrith or something like that, you're still in a lot of trouble. Yeah, for sure. So again, we saw this yesterday from Gavin, just putting stops on Keisuke Sato's turns or different uh, phases to bluff that single copy of Snakeskin Veil. Vale. Pretty interesting choice this time. You know, it, it made a lot of sense in those other matchups because there's a lot of removal, but this time you kind of want to bluff Red Cap Melee to be able to deal with Winota. Yeah. So no Winota this turn. 
going to be quite relieved at that. But does now, now have uh, the Lotus Cobra down. Being able to ramp into the Elite Spellbinder. So this will take a, this will take a squiz in the hand here and see that there's just the wilt. And this is pretty brutal here because when it puts it into that zone, now you mm -hmm. can just cast it for four. You don't, you you lose the ability to cycle it, which was yeah. probably the main thing Thompson wanted to do with that card. Yeah, that's quite rough indeed. So Den of the Bugbear, one of the new creature lands from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Looks like he's going to get some action here. Make a 1-1 one, one as it attacks. Yeah, or maybe just jumping into the Cadillac. Has a couple options here. Can either crew mm -hmm. with just Spare Sentinel and Den or just crew with the Bone Crusher. The 1-1 one, one is actually relevant here, though, because normally... Yeah. That 1-1 one, one comes into play. There's just spare Sentinels everywhere that can just kind of eat those up for free, <laughs> uh, but not the case here. Yeah, that little 1-1 one, one is able to kill anything on uh, Case Case side of things right now. As we'll see, the snake jump in the way of the Den of the Bugbear. Another land off the top for Case Case, so not what he's hoping for. And unfortunately, the interaction with Azika's Chariot there doesn't work because the, the trigger does have to go on the stack right away. So next turn, you can copy this 1-1, one, one, but doesn't work the turn you attack. So still and holding up that Burning Hands, that's very scary. Yeah, and then we hear we see these kind of draws uh, from Sato where you just you get the stuff ready for Winota, right? And then when you just don't find it, all of a sudden you're not doing the beatdown stuff as well as these Gruul Adventures or Naya Adventure decks are. So this come this is showcases a little bit of the awkwardness that you can see sometimes from these Naya Winota decks uh, versus the explosiveness that we saw game yeah. one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Winota just kind of meshes the entire deck together. You know, yes. on their own, these creatures are not phenomenal. They're blockers, if you want, but they <laughs> yeah. don't attack very well. Yeah, exactly. All the humans can do some attacking, but all the non-humans are really facilitators to the deck, and, and it shows when you get these kind of draws. But, you know, that being said, Elite Spellbinder is able to start presenting a bit of a clock. Still yeah, can be blocked by the Sentinel, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Spare Sentinel lines up pretty well with that, but, you know, like you mentioned in the air, if we do find a Winota or a Blade Historian, mm -hmm. we'd be able to start to... Uh, Doing some big damage in oh the air, but my. here it comes. Oh dear. This is two triggers oh. with these creatures, and Gavin knows this is bad news, bears. Only one blocker up at the moment, and Winota needs to whiff here for this to not end terribly for Gavin. And even with a whiff, you get to do it again next turn, unless Thompson draws removal for it. That was a huge draw. Oh my goodness. We got a giant killer as well as Kenrith. You can give everything trampled too. It's not lethal, but it's going to hurt. And correctly leaving one red mana open to be able to activate Kenrith here to give everything trample. Spelling bad news for Thompson. Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. He needs to draw something to get rid of Winota. Steal Kenrith. I don't know what it is, but he needs it right now. Ugh, Edgewell Innkeeper, you're not going to do it, my dude. That just shows how explosive these Naya Winota decks are just off the top. That one creature just changed, completely changed the dynamic of the game. It's just, yeah, Winota arrives and oops, you're dead. That's 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 basically how it goes with this deck. It Gavin really had, is. had time. He, he just unfortunately didn't draw into anything he needed to keep himself alive in this match. And Wilt wasn't the sideboard card you wanted mm -hmm. in this particular situation. Of course, it's good against the Zika's Chariot, but not the red cap melee to be able to have an answer for Winota. Yeah, I'm just taking one last look, seeing if there is anything he can do with the giant killer on the other side. He'll just be able to tap down an attacker, and he's going to concede there. So Keisuke Sato picks up the victory and stays alive. Gavin Thompson is eliminated. What an absolute run, though, for Thompson. Played excellently.